Okay, welcome everyone to this week's DNI working group meeting. And I'm so pumped I'm on meeting today. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you've not added your name to the uh, meeting minutes, please kindly add it. I think uh, Matt will drop the link again. So please kindly add it and tell us how you're feeling today. So um, first on the agenda for today is uh, the DNI badging program. Uh, I don't think Matt is here, um, Matt Snell. I don't think he's on the call. Uh, uh, Atta, we want to take on that. Uh, I think I think Atta is here. So um, Atta, do you want to like, give us some context on that, like updates or anything? I can add some things. Okay. Maybe Asta. Asta, if you're trying to talk, we can't hear you. No, I'm not saying anything. Oh wait, I heard you. <laughs> I <did> Me too. <laughs> Well, I think she said she wasn't saying anything, but... Uh... Oh, gotcha, okay. Um, well, so we are live on the program, right? I just put it in the chat so you okay. can get access to the, to the request form. Um, in the weekly call, we also spent a little bit of time trying to think through what some events could be that we could reach out to. I'll put those in the chat too. Yeah, I, I think I added um, the link to the meeting minutes for uh, the weekly sync. Yeah, so. You did? Could, um, yeah, yeah, it's on the, it's on the meeting minutes, this current meeting minutes. I added like a link. Oh, you, you already copied everything down to the... Yeah, okay. That's great. Um, I looked at the list, so well, I think. So I think okay. like my one of my agenda items and others can join this agenda item is to reach out to some of the organizers, whomever they may be. Uh, to see if they would have an interest in participating in the DNI badging program is really as simple as that. Um, and just hoping to start creating a conversation with some of the event organizers. And I haven't done that since yesterday, <laughs> 23 hours ago, yet to do. Uh, any other additions on the DNI? Meanwhile, you could put um, anything you want to talk about on the meeting minutes, you could add it there. Yeah, so uh, any other additions? I had maybe one other. Um, Shoya, I know you're on right now. I don't know if you have audio, but maybe you could talk a little bit about the get book work you've been doing around badging. Yeah, um, I've been working on the applying for badge section. Uh, let me find the link and I'll put it in a minute. Okay. Um, um, I will just put the link in the chat. Okay. So I think um, I'm really getting well with Gitbook. It's <laughs> um, oh, and um, I, I, and, and I really I I look forward to uh, uh, what's going on on the translation um, the the work uh, with Tola about uh, use uh, localized to translate the documentation. 
because I think that that could be also applied for the um, DNI um, badging documentation. Okay. Is there, Shoya, is there anything that you need people to take a look at on the stuff you're doing right now? Or do you think you're pretty good? Um, yeah, I, I, I think I, I, I wish everybody to look, take a look at the applying section. And um, uh, we were just talking about uh, on, the, on the badging group. Uh, I, I was just talking with Asta uh, maybe to specify the submission form to may, maybe make it more ma metric based. Um, I mean, just uh, enrich um, some of the questions maybe to make it um, more detailed. Um, maybe um, take um, oh, family, yeah. Fa yeah. <laughs> maybe take uh, the family fairness metric for example, um, on the, so I'll put the this metric link in the chat. So uh, when, um, when we define the, uh, define this metric, uh, we already have some, I think these are very specified questions to uh, interview the conference staff. Uh, like um, beside the um, child care, we also, um, uh, it also contains like, um, like um, does it support, uh, um, offer the mother's room and, and something like that. And I, I'm not sure if this is also can be detailed in the submission form of the DI, DI badging. Gotcha. So um, the oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to add, like she's referring to the uh, data collection strategies for metrics and in cases that can be used in the checklist. The questions, not. Yeah, I'll share my screen. So this area right in here, right? Yes, uh, this is interview the, for yeah. the, yes, yes, to the okay. conference stuff. So is the suggestion to like, in the application form, which is this right here. Sorry for all the scrolling. But for this family friendliness section, um, maybe be a little bit more explicit on how, or maybe have some of these exact questions show up here. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's a good suggestion. I think it was also about including those questions as a part of the checklist. For the for the reviewers, Asta? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. So under every set of questions, um, there's the criteria sections, which is basically bullet points, but it is also the content of the checklist that describes to applicants what they should be trying to achieve beforehand. Okay. Okay. Just making notes. And then, okay, Asta or, or um, I'm sorry, somebody else talking. Yeah, I was just going to say Linux Foundation is one of the only organizers that I know that go through so much family friendliness. Um, from what I understand, a lot of it's liability. So that might be a hard one. Something we actually put a lot of thought into when we organized London DevOps Days, which is a relatively small conference. 
And we found that um, it didn't really, so I'm, I can't remember exactly what we, what we had, but we had, we had childcare, for example, and the cost really wasn't that, wasn't that great. So I think it was, I think these things are accessible even to smaller conferences that put the effort into it. Yeah, I know when OpenStack looked into it, a lot of it was they didn't want to take the liability of finding someone. Um, but yeah, DevOps days may be small, but they are some of the best conferences I've ever been to, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, Linux Foundation is the only really large one I've ever seen them have childcare and stuff. And I think the liability issue is the main factor there, not necessarily the cost. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I think I misunderstood your question. What we what we did for London DevOps Days um, to get around the liability thing is we uh, we contracted a licensed. Um, they're basically like licensed nanny company, and they they come in with what they call like the the toy trolley or something like that, and they have like this. They have this whole setup, and this is what they do, and and they were insured separately. Okay. So we we contracted with somebody who did that. It wasn't just like we didn't staff it ourselves because that would have been right. a liability disaster. <laughs> Definitely. All right. I'm going back to breakfast. Um, so for Asta or Shoya, was family friendliness the only metric that you talked about with respect to um, kind of looking more um, specifically? Not exactly. It was. It was just um, an example. I think oh, okay. uh, the use case for this metric fits better. Like we can start there. Okay. And gotcha. And then, okay, that's helpful. Um, and then for Don and for Amy, what I sh what, what's actually in this list here, it's pretty high level. So to basically to Asta and Shoya's point, there are some really a lot lower level things that we could take a look at. Do you think this is at least reasonable to start based on your experience in working with um, issues of family friendliness at conferences? Personally, I think this is a good start. Okay, cool. All right. I have a quick question. So um, if we do have suggestions for other things to add to that list, like, um, like a family restroom, for instance, or something like that, um, is there a place to do that? Where should we do that, Matt, or somebody? Like just open gonna... an issue? Yeah, I'm going to defer to Georg or Kevin on that because they are, they follow the change metric process a little bit more closely than I do. Is the question about adding something to our metric or to the form? Both really, I think, but it, it's something that would be added to the metric first, I would assume, and then to the form after it gets kind of vetted and worked through. So to add something to a metric, um, we can start with an issue or a pull request. The issue would be good if we are not quite sure about the language, um, but if you know exactly what you want, just open a pull request and then we just need to track that as a change if it's more than you know, a typo fix or whatever, because that should show up in the release notes as a change to the metric. Okay. Then as far as editing the form goes, that we we certainly have the ability to do that. However, I would defer uh, that conversation to the uh, the badging work group. Makes sense. <clears throat> Okay, um, any other additions? 
I think that's none. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll move ahead to the next on the agenda, um, burnout metric. So I kind of have, um, I tried to um, work on the Google Doc uh, from last week, all the additions that we made. I'll just point out the questions I have from the additions that we made. I can share okay. my screen. So, I can. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay, yeah, great. So, um, for Justin's comment, or uh, about the, I wanted to ask: Should I like put this in the in the references, um, the references um, below, like this um, burnout circle by Habat? Yeah, so I want to ask that. I think Justin's on the call. Okay, that's great. Uh, okay, so uh, the next question I actually wrote down was uh, where are we going to define self care? Because I think there was a comment on defining self care. I don't know who made that comment. Yeah, uh, yeah, Laura. Yeah, I think Laura made that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they comment about defining self care. Is this it? Yeah. Was well, a comment um, below about defining self care. So I wanted to ask, where exactly are we going to like define it? Oh, here. Yeah. For self care. Mm -hmm. Um, we could, I mean, if Maybe we could reach out to Laura, but we could put a, a reference right there. I think this is our, or what about this though too? Anyway, in terms of defining the term, um, maybe we could reach out to Laura and simply provide a reference to that item right there. Yeah, okay. I think she also added uh, something about uh, the truck factor down the random idea area. I also wanted to ask about some context on that as a tool, like using the truck factor as a tool. If you actually scroll down, you see a comment about that at the random area section. Where is that? Oh, random ideas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like, I don't know. What is it? What's a Gini coefficient? I, I think uh, that link takes you to like a, a GitHub repository about using um, truck factor to measure contributions. Okay. Is anybody familiar with Gini coefficient? The Gini coefficient is an economic term for countries about their income distribution, or the economics in that country, something around like that. Okay. Okay, so uh, any, any other, I think those are the questions I have, I put out. So is there any other additions on the Bonnet metric? I think maybe Ruth, you and I could kind of clear up all these comments over the course of the next week. And it'd be cool if we could bring a somewhat completed metric forward. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, sure. 
Okay, that'll that be, be fine. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on to the next translation. So uh, I... I have oops. some comments on that. So oh, okay. we, um, so again, we, we do have funds to do translation. Um, these funds are provided by the Sloan Foundation. And we had a meeting with the company that's behind to get localize. So get localize is a free tool that Tola had been exploring as part of outreachy to do translations. Um, but we can also use some of the funds to kind of lift certain parts of the chaos project off the ground a little faster in the sense that the company will do the translations for us. So the question I had, um, was, are there a particular set of documents that people think would be the most sensible to translate out of the gate? Is it the web pages? I know we've had this discussion before, but I'd love to just kind of finalize this. Is it, oh, go ahead, Justin, sorry. You're pretty quiet, Justin. I don't, either I'm Is, is this better? It is. Okay, I don't know what happened. Um, I was just asking, could you maybe add more background or context to what's being translated? If it's like the metrics, it's, it's the website. I guess I missed that context. Oh, this is the context I was asking for. So, <laughs> um, so, so basically like, uh, so we have a, a million pages kind of spread across the repo and the website and um, we obviously just can't translate them all. We don't have that amount of money. So what would be the, the pages or the documents that you think would be the highest impact for others from a translation perspective? So I so believe, oh, sorry. Yeah. No. I, I was gonna say, I, I've mentioned this before. Uh, I believe the, uh, the first thing we should do is translate the metrics releases. So all of the metrics that we have released and then a metrics release document. So is this a, is this on, are you talking about the GitHub pages? Are you talking about the web page? I think if you were, if we were to do that, we would, we would translate the metrics markdown files uh, that have been released. And then we generate a new release based on those translations. Okay, so what Justin provided, just the link to the metrics there. Could, how about this? Could you, Kevin, could you put a link to the pages that you think need to be translated? Well, so it would, it would be every metric that we've released so far. So there and, would be, and, we've released how many metrics? 40 some odd metrics, yeah, so 46 or something. It would be, yeah, 40 some odd metrics markdown files. And then we would probably need to uh, translate the uh, two or three markdown files on the website that, uh, that provide the uh, kind of the navigation and introduction. Uh, okay. And if we were to do that, then we would be able to generate a, a full release PDF that was that was completely translated and then additionally you would have the translated markdown files in each of the repositories where the metrics were defined okay and that's just where i would start i of course there are there are many many other places where we could go and and continue translating but i think the to start the the metrics that we've defined are a good introduction to the community and they're kind of descriptive of how our, of our workflow as well, so. Okay. So if I put this, so this is from, I think it's from Common. So if I put this, we would basically back translate, not back translate, but translate the GitHub page that's associated with this particular metric, is that right?
Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then um, that translation for the metric would live in the GitHub repo for common. And that translation would be accessible through a PDF. Is that right? Yes. So on the, uh, on the release notes page, mm -hmm. we, you have the ability to download PDFs of our, of all of the releases that we've done so far. So on that page, we also include a link to a PDF release for, uh, a Japanese language translation or, uh, a Spanish language translation. So if this page is translated in GitHub, can we also represent that translation not only through the PDF, but also in the web page? Uh, yes, we could. Yeah, there's technology we could use that would determine the user's browser native language and give them choices. We can also, you also see flags at the top of websites sometimes, but we would have to do that for the whole website, not just the metrics, probably. I think the and I think just to make sure I understand this, Kevin, the reason we're translating them in the markdown files on GitHub is because that's what you use to generate all of these pages. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Everything on the website is pulled directly from those GitHub markdown files. So it makes sense to have the translation there, both because it's where we work but also because that's where we're, where we're pulling from. So, uh, and I would say the, I think that's the, a good first step. And then Matt, what Matt and Sean was talking about, I think that's maybe, that's a more complexity that we, we look at doing uh, later. Yeah, the PDF generation is kind of an easy intermediate step but the full website translation is a bigger job. Okay, I agree with Kevin. I think it makes most sense to start with the, um, the metrics since that's what the release metrics since that's what ideally most people should care about. I think that makes sense. Now, I'm okay. just out of curiosity, is the goal to eventually have everything translatable on the fly or you go to the site, you pull a drop down for your language or the browser tells it what language to pull. Um, so are we gonna be eventually static content or on the fly content? I think that's a really difficult question <laughs> uh, that, that I would like to defer to later. <laughs> okay. But it's something we can defer to later without doing extra work that we're going to throw away. Correct. Yeah, I, I think if okay. we if we focus on translating the uh, the metrics metric markdown files that we have already released, I don't think that's throwaway. That's that's not throwaway content. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. Super helpful. Thank you. And then. Um, the so this one okay I'm just making notes. And then languages. So additional translations have additional costs, not surprisingly. And then we wouldn't at some point we'll have to maintain these by ourselves and we can use get localized to do this. Tola had brought this forward, it's pretty easy. So this first push is just to get a lot of these things done by somebody else. Um, and so obviously two languages requires a little bit more money and then a little bit more work down the road, three, four and so on. So are there certain languages that we should be translating to? I would suggest uh, Chinese first because Asia Pacific meeting, we have a like working group who are very much interested and like have started adding to the community also. So it'll help yeah. them to expand more. So I would recommend for the Chinese first. Yeah, I would, I would agree because the, a lot of the European languages uh, 
folks speak English as well. Chinese and Spanish probably make up a large proportion of the, the non-English uh, speaking community within chaos. Or, uh, or I should say, uh, English is a second language individuals not. And I think I think the Chinese translation would facilitate broad application inside uh, Asian countries, particularly China, where otherwise it would not be possible because developers aren't going to be honing their translation skills. They're just going to be writing code. Okay. Any other thoughts? I saw Amy had a comment too. Yeah, I mean, we can be asking our communities and I can't remember what um, open source tool we used at um, OAT, but you could add in your own translations into the program and then we would take it and translate it and build it into the system. Um, and as far as Chinese, don't forget, we need to be specific whether we're going to be asking for Mandarin or Cantonese. Um, I would think Mandarin. Okay. Yeah, I think King mentioned Mandarin. Okay, I just picking that, the wrong like... one would be really bad. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I mean, we can eventually set up something possibly, even if it's just a GitHub repo, and we have the tags in English or whatever, and, pe and just encourage people to put their own translations in. Um, you may not end up with complete translations, but it's a good way of getting people to have some ownership. Cool. I mean, there were even questions that came. So we had talked about Spanish just in the earlier conversation with this organization. And there were questions such as um, Spanish in Spain, Spanish in Latin America, Spain, and I didn't have <laughs> an answer. So, and Chinese may, may also be a similar question that it's more than Cantonese and Mandarin that I may not be able to answer as well. Are there? Yeah, the first know... project that I ever worked on that had a translation, we ended up into uh, our Canadian office and our French office fighting over the, the translation of French. Yeah, yeah, if you're in Canada, French is on the top of the list. I'm also wondering about whether or not, whether Portuguese or Spanish is first only because of the size and tech sector in Brazil. Uh, I think I think Mandarin really is uh, really occupy the largest proportion uh, for agree. Chinese to speak. Oh, I agree. I agree. I think Mandarin's first. And it's it's more uh, it is easier to understand um, compared to Cantonese. I, I think people uh, who speak Cantonese can uh, also understand Mandarin. Yeah, and that's kind of like Spanish and. Catalan. Um, we could get around Barcelona with someone who spoke fluent Spanish. Um, and, I, and I would assume vice versa, they could get around like Mexico City. Um, now there are, of course, individual words that are different between di different languages, but at least if you can get five of the six words translatable in your own mind, you can usually figure out that six word. So I think you know, picking the most generic one of a diff of a language type will at least get us the basics. And then we can always say, okay, and now we want to do French Canadian to go along with our Canadian, which might also go with our Haitian Can French, you know, so there's all the different dialects that are still a language, but starting with the most basic and easiest for us, I think will give us enough coverage that we can then go back and try to get more specifics. I just dropped an example of uh, the open chain projects uh, specification translations uh, in GitHub into the chat. So it looks like they are, they're translating into about 10 different languages, it looks like. 
It looks like it looks like they're doing them on a document basis, as you suggested initially, not the entire website. <coughs> yes. Yeah, and then they they also have uh, uh, specific work groups for uh, for different areas. So I know there is a there's a Korean work group uh, and a and a Japanese work group as well, and uh, on those in those work group repositories, it looks like the uh, it's a, uh, there is some English translation on it, but, uh, it is mostly, uh, the language of the work group. So. And Japanese is certainly another language to consider toward the top of the list simply because it's such a populous country with so much tech. And they have been active in the chaos community, especially in the licensing and compliance area. Okay, this is help, helpful. I think what I'll do is get a quote for the metrics and I, I'll just start with Mandarin and some Spanish. Um, and we'll go from there. How does that sound? And then we can kind of work out the workflow with Kevin and all that kind of stuff. And I just put a link into the chat for Poodle, which was the system we were using and we could probably throw it up somewhere and that way people who want to translate it into their language can go ahead and do it on their own. And then we just combine it in later. Maybe I'll take a look at the stuff that Shane has done in open chain. Cause at least from my perspective, they've been pretty amazing with respect to doing translations. Um, and they must have some workflow by which they engage community members to get this work done. So I'll, I'll take a, I'll kind of look through how open chain has done it as well. So thanks for the feedback, everybody. Uh, okay. Uh, mm. Matt, is there any other additions on that before moving to the next one? Okay, so we're like 10 minutes to the end of the meeting. And I think the last agenda is new metrics. Uh, who wants to talk about that? So I can, I just like uh, to Um, so as we're finishing uh, project burnout, I think that's coming to a close. Does anybody remember yeah. the conversation around document discoverability, doc document usability, document accessibility? Remember this was one giant document metric for a long time and then we broke it into three. Yes, but not in relationship to burnout. No, no, no. I, okay. As we're no, no, no. Yeah, I was saying as okay. we're kind of cl closing out burnout. Yeah, no, okay. no. I think we okay. should combine all these things: burnout and document accessibility into one giant metric. So no. Um, so as it's coming to a close, I there there has been quite a bit of work done on those other components of documentation, and I would suggest that perhaps starting next week we could resurface those a little bit. Um, I'll share the spreadsheet here. The tab, I don't know what tab this takes you to. B and I maybe. If you scroll down to the bottom, rows 59 and 60. So we do have these started documents for this. And it was just a suggestion that perhaps next week we could start bringing these forward again because there's a lot of good work done on them and one metric was released out of that conversation which was the documentation usability did you sh is it oh, i'm sorry you shared a link in the chat yeah sorry okay <clears throat> i was looking for a screen share 
Oh. I certainly I remember can... the conversation. Good. It was a very good conversation. Good. Would you like to help help us through that conversation starting next week again? Um, <laughs> let me make sure that I'm here next week. Yeah. Okay. That'd be awesome. All right, that was it, Ruth. That was, it was just to bring those back to the surface. Okay. So, um, is there any other additions, any other, just, we are just seven minutes time. So any other additions, little topics before we close off? Uh, Matt, your audio. I don't know if I spelled, I'm sure I spelled facilitator in the chat wrong, but whatever. Facilitate, oh. you're all going to look now. <laughs> um, a facilitator for next week. Hmm. Thanks. Ne well, next week is Grace Hopper. So oh. mm. um, I definitely won't be here. Yeah, my October is like for shit, so. Okay. <laughs> uh, did we, uh, real quick, was there, was there something we wanted to put on the website for Grace Hopper? Okay. I feel like there was something we were talking about. Uh, we certainly indicate that we are participating again this year. Um, yeah, I think we floated the idea of having a landing page for participants to come to that would just kind of have everything. But I don't know if we need that, honestly, since Grace Hopper kind of has their own landing page and there's Slack and other places for us to connect with them. So I don't know. I think Good it's question, about promoting Kevin. our connection. Yeah, I yeah. would do social for Open Source Day. Um, I haven't even started doing it for OpenStack, so don't go by me. But um, yeah, so... Y'all should be in the Slack. I have not actually, because I would join you in your Slack. Yeah, I'm actually in the Slack for OSD. Okay, maybe it's, I wonder why I don't see you. There's no one there, well, I'll come visit. Um, open stack, open stack, open stack. I do not see chaos listed. Oh, there it is, Chaos General. Okay, I'll come join you. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so they're sending stuff out to the participants, the possibility of a Saturday setup meeting, if any of you are interested in doing that. My project isn't. Um, but yeah, so that would be the first chance for anyone to meet the mentees who show up. But um, otherwise, it's typical Grace Hopper OSD, and you'll meet everybody Thursday morning. I think, Sean, aren't you participating? Yeah. With Augur? Yep. Yeah, Augur's doing it, the virtual Grace Hopper. It's, um, you know, it's virtual. So I'm not, I mean, it's, it's going to be an experience. It's always then, an experience. It's going to be more of an experience for Yeah. Me. Yeah, we had a great time last year. Last year was a lot of fun, and there's a there's a wide range of programming experience in that room. And the eight students that we worked with, um, I'm just trying to imagine how that's going to. I mean, I'm I'm interested in how it's going to go with the kind of sort of moving around a lot of attention that people demanded in a virtual context. So I'm excited to figure out how that works. Yeah, we're going to break up as much as possible and do peer programming because I don't know how this is going to work out. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. but we're going to try. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Okay, so um, I think um, I'm also in the Chaos General channel for OSD. 
So I'll check out the um, description of the project and also see how I can help during the OSD for chaos. Yeah. So we're two minutes over. Thanks everyone for letting me do this. It was good really job. nice. <laughs> did a good job. We're a tough crowd. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. Yeah. So, okay, so this, this is the end of the meeting. See you guys next week. Take care. Yeah. Everybody. I'm supposed to stop the record.